the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. And ooh, grim dark. But before we get into that, if you enjoy today's episode and you maybe want to support the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen. The $15 tier gets you access to all of our crispy posters in HD digital format. And ooh, Bricky, guess what? New poster. The January poster. Mm -hmm. The the first of the brand new year. The first of 2024. Are you ready for the new poster? I don't know, because I can't ever judge your tone anymore. You've you've gone every direction (laughs) with every kind of poster, so I don't know. You'll love uh, it. You'll, you'll you'll like it. You'll like it. You might not like love it? it, but you will enjoy it. It's 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 a it's a bricky forward poster. Yes. All right. All right. All right. Let's let's see it, Shy. Let, let, Give him the this. business. Let's see this bricky forward poster. Oh, that is a bricky forward poster. Yeah, it's the guard. I That's forget which good. I forget which regiment it is though. Shy told me. Those are I the don't remember. Tempestus Scions. Ah, uh, yes. Those are uh, pretty good. All I remember is there were like two variants. One was helmeted, one had a hat, and so there's one with the helmet, one with the hat. And it's I, it's good. It's great art. I love it. I think it's great looking. I think that's fantastic. I love yeah. the Scions. They're one of my favorite units. They're really just cool looking. They got the mm-hmm. gas masks are awesome. I like the berets they wear a lot. That that's that's good. I you yeah. know what? I'm happy with that. And Bricky and Forward Poster. Bricky Forward Poster. And you uh, viewer can purchase this poster now at orchid8.com link in the description check it out it is under the ad rick section for the posters wahoo you, brand new poster you, you should purchase this poster now now, now. mods <laughs> buy this poster buy this poster which means shad the next poster needs to be like ultra cursed we've given a bricky forward poster the next one needs to be like bricky's nightmare incarnate so it needs to be just the most anime uwu thing ever you na- naturally uh with with life one must give and take and mm-hmm. it's a balance yeah. you cannot have light without dark right ah the alan wake oh is that an alan wake thing i mean isn't that kind of the whole point of the well, yeah, the I guess. Kinda, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Alan yeah. Wake. You play, You haven't played the second one yet, though, right? Not yet. But you played the DLC, so you know who Mr. Scratch is, right? I I, I played the American Nightmare spinoff game with Mr. I, Scratch. I did not, and I was very confused in Alan Wake 2 for a little bit. But anyway, we're, we're, we're sidetracking. We're, we're sidetracking I, a little bit. It is. I, one last thing on that, though. Do not play American Nightmare. It is... <laughs> dog shit it is oh, well, i guess i'm glad i skipped it. it is awful oh my god it's like a two out of ten genuinely it's oh. terrible anyway all right all enough right. of that <laughs> yeah um okay so we got so, ourselves we got ourselves this is a big in, one right it's a big one Ooh. Uh, it's a it's a big one it is a big one um i gotta be honest uh, there's 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 not a lot of quotes on I mean, yes! like, okay so yes uh, whoa 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 oh. don't you dare um uh, the issue that we run into here is that the the quotes for this particular topic are they're too obvious uh uh-huh. even for me oh yeah oh uh and and that okay. that's that's it's the, the space wolves he got it. Let's go. Did I really? Is it actually the space? Wolf? Exactly. Let's, <laughs> let's go. Well, you didn't quite get it. I mean, it's it's oh. it's, Lehman, it's Lehman Russ. Oh, like, right. It know. would be Lehman Russ first, and then it would be the Space Wolves. Right, right. Because that's how we do it. That's fair. That's fair. every quote I had had the word wolf, wolf king, <laughs> Lehman, r- or Russ in it. So I, I, I oh well, think yeah. I any. think maybe maybe yeah. That was would have been a little obvious if all of them have Lehman. Russ or Wolf in them. Fair enough. Fair I, enough. Which like makes a lot of sense when you realize that Lehman Russ is known as all kinds of names, mostly involving the Wolf King, <laughs> the, the wolf Great King, Wolf, yeah. the Lord of Winter and War, <laughs> etc. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. So little little hard to have thrown out a, a solid quote, all things considered. Um, but uh, but yes, I, I guess I think we should still chuck this up as a point for DK Shy. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I should get a point for that, considering I just threw it out into the ether, just thinking like, oh, it's a big episode. Surely it's got to be one of the chapters we haven't covered. And that's, I guess, Space Wolves and the Thousand Suns. I, I, I think the last two. I don't think yeah. we're missing any after those. Yeah. Random guest doesn't count. All right. She's 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 just, uh, she, um, you know, what? I, so I get a point. Credits. You get a cool, point. Cool, cool, I'm giving cool. you a point. Nice. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, it's like a gold star, but Shy like like fucking smudged it. Oh, yeah, Anywho. half of it is like ripped off and broken and doesn't stick anymore. And yeah, yeah, yeah it's like a bad gold star. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. yes, uh, Lehman Russ, uh, mm. the the Wolf King himself, the the Emperor's executioner, also known. <laughs> yeah, um, a very single minded man, from what I've heard. So that that's a great point to start this thing off is um. This episode's so I knew a, a good bit about Russ, uh, often through the uh, uh, through osmosis with a lot of the other Primarchs and various 40k lore. Uh, mm-hmm. Space Wolves are absolutely a a decently popular faction. Um, sure, I know sure. I know many people that have Space Wolf uh, Space Wolf armies, and you yep. know for for the most part they are they're pretty. They're pretty solid. Yeah, um, they're they're wolf Vikings. They're they are wolf Vikings. I, I mean, they're they're Vikings first before they're wool uh, before they're wolf stuff. Uh, the oh, but they're called space wolves. Come on, I mean, well, the, the Horace is Horace was the Luna wolves. True, but he's they, also a traitor. He's a filthy traitor. He is a filthy traitor. Um, but <laughs> it is it is a little interesting uh, learning and reading up even more about Lehman Russ. Does he have he, a book? Uh like like an actual like, like a personal Primark book? Yeah, like a Primark book. So it depends on, on what you're referring to by uh Primark book. Because a lot of the Primarchs have Primark books. Uh this mm-hmm. one would be Wolf's Bane. Uh because Oh, of that course. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um but this these Primark books are not necessarily like Primark raising books. Oh, it's like something important they did after they became a Primarch and just kind of. It's like, um, <clears throat> like, like, so Perturabo, for example, he had a book that bounced between his younger life and his older life, and it gave him a, a crap load more lore. Um, yeah. You had Alpharius's book, you know, <laughs> with for what we can take in, <laughs> in truth with that one. Yeah. Um, and this one is a lot like Dorn's book, Praetorian of, of Terror or whatever, um, which is mainly like heresy stuff. Yeah, not upbringing, just what they were doing during or right before the heresy and during the heresy. And like they're still <clears throat> bouncing around. Don't get me wrong, but uh, it's more like 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 Fulgrim is often centered around Fulgrim. And there's a lot less of like his time on on Fenris. Not or, well, right. Well, Fulgrim would be. um. Oh, crap! What the hell is Fulgrim's home planet? Called? Whatever his home planet is, not important yeah. right now. And then, yeah, <clears throat> um, but it would be Fenris for for Lunar Russ. Yeah. So, so yeah. yes, but no. Okay. Um, so, in fact, his doing the research for for Lehman Russ, as I've mentioned to our viewers many a times, is that the Primark episodes are not to cover every deed that they've done because, oh my God, uh, it is to it's cover a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> It's to cover the understanding of the character. Like, well, I want you to leave here really, really getting Lehman. Yeah. Not every little minutia of their life, but just you have a firm understanding of what the Primarch is about. And that created an interesting challenge <clears throat> to this episode because Lehman did not take long to research. Um, oh, really? It, it, I imagine his research is a lot of, oh, the emperor sent him to kill someone, and then he did. Well, that's a lot of his deeds, yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Lehman is... Le- Lehman is a simple man. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Now, we can't confuse simple with being, like, dull or non-complex. 
yeah Le- Lehman has intrigue he has mm. very like interesting parts about him and and very fascinating character quirks um so like yeah memes aside he's not like a moron oh yeah certainly yeah um well no primark is right? no but uh, uh he's not like the the dim-witted uh i just want to drink and, and kill guy right right I, I don't know if you got to the part in uh son of the forest yet where um they were kind of describing primarks and they were like yeah the the greatest human in history might in their preferred field that they have been studying their whole life and that they are masterful at may one day reach the knowledge level of a primark in a field the primark didn't care about and right. i was like oh so yeah primarks are no joke they're not stupid regardless of if they're like the primark of war or the primark of drinking or whatever they're still like upper echelon right and and so that's the that was the biggest challenge here was to describe Lehman Russ in a way that had that had, had everyone understand him as a person, despite him very much saying what he is on the tin, uh, but like also trying to get down to the minutia. So anyway, let's yeah. let's go ahead and get into his history. Let's do it. So Lehman Russ, Primarch of the of the Space Wolves, son of the Emperor. Space Wolves being the sixth Legion. I actually didn't write this down. I'm trying to remember if I'm just correct. Sure. Um, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's the sixth Legion. I'm, Google, I'm trying. Google, Google. <clears throat> hey, Siri, what Legion are the Space Wolves? Oh, yeah, I was right. Six. Hell yeah. I didn't I didn't think I would need it, but I, I nailed it. Oh, All man. Right. Siri didn't give me shit. Wow. How dare she? Um, but yes, Primarch of the Sixth Legion, he, like all the other Primarchs, was yeeted across the galaxy uh, after the entire Primarch project, and the Emperor mm-hmm. had to go find him, yada yada. Yep, uh, yep, he yep. was dropped on Fenris, a, a extraordinarily cold, I don't know if we would call Fenris a death world, I'm not quite sure if it's classified as a death world. Um, but wow, it is, is it is a that is a half white planet. Also, it, appropriate it is, name for the uh, uh for the Primarch of the Space Wolves to land on Fenris. It a little is, on the nose, but that that's okay. It's 40K. oh oh oh. Th- this time, like this, might be the most on the nose of them all. <laughs> as as far yeah. as as far as things go, this might be the most on the nose episode we have. Okay. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty it's something but um yes it's a feral world and a death world those are its two options so very very low technology and also death world yeah it's no catachin but the the temperatures are definitely one of the biggest aspects still no fun not a fun fun place to land yeah so lehman gets yeeted onto this world and he He is found by a very deadly mother Thunderwolf. Oh. And it, instead of killing him, the, the wolf raises him as one of her own. Oh, wow. He is literally raised by wolves, huh? I, I did a double take when I first read this, and I was like, you, you've got to be shitting me. No freaking Ooh. way. Uh, so Lehman Russ, leader of the Space Wolves, literally raised by wolves, huh? He was literally raised by wolves for a good portion of his childhood. Okay, um, okay. Are Thunder Wolves just like really big wolves or something? They're basically an offshoot of wolves from of Terran wolves that are on this planet, uh, except okay. they're just enormous. So like a dire wolf. Yeah, but like like quadruple the size of a dire wolf Ooh, because yeah, that's, a, that's a that's a princess Mononoke wolf. I mean, yeah, kind of a little bit, yeah. Sometimes um, right, depends cool. on the size of the of the wolf. This is a death world after all. Sure, sure. Uh, so he was raised by these wolves and also had two particular uh, brother wolves. Um, their names escape me right now, but I think I actually. Have it here. It's it's uh, definitely from Norse mythology side. Um, oh, here it is. Oh, okay. uh, Fre- Freki and Gary, not Gary? not 
The, the G-E-R-I. <laughs> Maybe it's a g- giddy or, or something. Ah, Gary. Gary. No, um, <laughs> I, I don't know how to describe it, but they're. Uh, all right. All right. All right. The, the wolf, the wolfkins of Russ is his brothers growing up, so to speak. One is uh, the brown one in the background of that photo. And then there's the white uh, furred one in the front. OK, OK, OK. I'm surprised we didn't get like a Scotty or something. I mean, it's a, to kind of explain how big they are. Here are their minis. Um. Whoa! That's a space marine right there. So like, they're pretty. They're pretty wow. chunky, dude. <laughs> Jeez, they're like the size of a small tank. Yeah, they're they're really big. Nice. Um, I, I love a giant wolf. I gotta be honest with you. They're very cool. So he was raised alongside these wolves, and uh, all went and go pillaging for wolves and the like, or uh, wolves pillaging for food for the wolves and all. And eventually a group of hunters and folk uh, found them and began, you know, murdering them with poison arrows and all kinds of other stuff because they're giant wolves and that's what people do. Sure, sure. I mean, you know, they'd Lehman, probably eat you if you didn't. Yeah. So Lehman Russ pissed off, killed about a dozen of them with his hands because he was a feral wolf boy. A feral wolf Primark boy. And uh, especially because they also killed the mom wolf that they uh, that he was raised by. So rest in peace, mom wolf. Oh, poor mama. But eventually, after a dozen or so of them died, a lot of them were like, wait a second. Wait a second, that's a kid. <laughs> wait a minute, that's no wolf. It's like, wait that's a minute. no moon. What the hell? And so they, they stopped attacking them. And uh, escorted the uh, both Lehman and his two wolf brothers uh, back to the camp, kind of you know carefully, but to yeah, be like, hey, with, <laughs> with what all the hell? And uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, definitely want to give them a wide berth when you're walking them into town. I, I would have liked if this whole opening thing did get a bit more fleshed out, but at the moment we don't have a lot. Mm. Um, basically, eventually the welcomes them into the the tribe of Russ. That's the name of the tribe. It's the Russ okay. the Russ tribe. That um makes and sense. they went to go meet the king, King Thengear of the Russ. And the king uh <laughs> despite the objections of some of his court took mercy on him as a boy and sought to train him for his useful potential despite the objections. I think that's fair. Like, if you can train him to actually like humans and serve humans, there's no reason not to. You saw what he can do. I mean, better to have him on your side than against, without a doubt. And And then you get all his wolves. Yeah, and then then, you you get the wolves, but then you also got to remember, like, hey, this kid is out and, like, living in the wild, and it's, like, negative 100 out here in Fenris sometimes or whatever. Like, it is... It is inhospitable in a lot of ways. Yeah, and he's just out there with loincloths, I guess, or like pelts. I don't really know, because like if he had a pelt, then they would assume he's skinned to the wolves, so I don't really know exactly. Well, you know, maybe one of the wolves died of natural causes, waste not, want not, and you know. Ah, here's a great thing. I uh, want to read Shai's description of Fenris. Sure. During the summer months, volcanoes erupt, burning great ashes with lava flows and churning the seas, spreading great floods and tidal waves. As the planet enters its long winter, the temperature drops so far that most of it actually ices over, giving the planet the appearance of a snowball from orbit. Oh, that's uh, that's chilly. That's Death a- World. Death World. Woo. Hooray. So in classic Primark fashion, uh, Lehman was learned things really quickly. He learned to speak really fast because he's a Primark. Yep. He became their best fighter by far because he's a Primark. Sure. Um, and he was given the name Lehman. So he was Lehman of the Russ. Okay. Lehman of the Russ. Yeah, hence of the his Russ Lehman tribe. Russ name. Yeah. Exactly. So eventually, gotcha. uh, King Thengear passed away, natural reasons, and mm-hmm. he was then elevated to the title of King of Wolf King of the Russ tribe. In Makes classic sense. Primark fashion, he ruled extremely well. He brokered a peace between man and wolf, which was kind of baller. Yeah, that's sick. It's truly the Wolf King. Truly the Wolf King, but between his upbringing with the wolves and now him, his Primark intelligence, 
the wolves and the humans lived mostly in harmony, uh, which is pretty impressive, all things considered. Yeah, that'd be a pretty dope place to live where like humans and wolves just like coexist and they're just kind of like you have your own little wolf familiar with you. I guess not really a familiar, but you get little wolf friends. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're often utilized a lot in the tabletop. You can actually just run just wolves. Like, yeah. not your, your, your entire army isn't all wolves, but like you can run units of like oh, 10 yeah. packs of wolves. Oh, there you oh, you can have space marines that are riding wolves. I just saw that picture that Chai posted. That's ooh, Thunder that's, Wolf that's, Cavalry is what they're called. Ooh, that's pretty cool, dude. Their uh Thunderwolf Cavalry are actually one of the the more popular uh units in the Space Wolves for clearly obvious reasons. Oh yeah. If I if I was running Space Wolves, I would have a ton of the wolf riders. Absolutely. Yeah, they're really, really fun. And, and you know, they have those wolves, but they also have just, like, thunder wolves, which are just mm-hmm. the wolves by themselves. Yep. And it, it, that's fun. Mauling the space marine. <laughs> yeah, Fenrisian wolves just on their own, running around, jumping on things. Very cool. Very cool. I'm, I, I gotta say, I'm digging the space wolves more and more as this goes on. So... One important thing, um, oh yeah, a lot of the wolves do have cybernetic enhancements because they've been injured in battle. It's kind of neat. Oh, sick. Yeah. Cy- oh, cyborg wolves, let's go. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We'll get more into this in the, in the actual uh, uh, Space, in the wolves, Space wolves, episode. wolves episode. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's neat. Um, one, actually, well, here's an important thing. Uh, a lot of the tales of Lehman Russ's early life are written by Narl the Elder, which is basically just this person who kind of wrote down a bunch of um, a bunch of old school sagas. So Space Wolves as a faction are all about stories, much like Norse mythology is. I was going to say that's, that sounds like a very Viking thing. One might also say it's a little gnarly (laughs) 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 even russ would kill you for that yep he well yeah that would not be the first offense he would kill me for i am sure if i talked to lehman russ he would just yeah actually you know maybe i maybe i'm wrong he might not kill you for that but he would he would genuinely be upset he would Um, bitch slap my face so hard like my skin would just yeah yeah um, but a lot of the the whole idea of the Space Wolves are all about their sagas. It's about it's about creating a story of legend of deed. Uh, so okay. a lot like even in game, the Space Wolf special ability is called Deeds Worthy of Saga. And all right, so all right. it's all about like doing if you do like really crazy things in game, you get buffs. And so that's the whole idea is you're building up your saga. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, very, very on the nose Norse mythology. But I like it. That's cool. Like Norse mythology has always been like super interesting and and I, I, I kinda love that honorable saga so you can get into Valhalla or your name will be remembered in song for all of eternity until Ragnarok or something, you know? I, I love that. That's cool. The and and so a lot of Lehman Russ's early times are told in that oral style, you know, transferred mm-hmm. from person to person. Uh, and so it was ta- it talked a lot about like how he would turn back whole armies by himself. He would wrestle Fenrisian mammoths and then cook it that evening and eat it, lifting mm. entire trees from the ground. Uh, you know, just crazy stories of Lehman, which like some of those I could totally believe because he's a Goddamn Primark. It's a Primark, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm <laughs> imagine an exaggerated story about a Primark, um, like as if they weren't already like superhuman. Yeah. Ironically, though, if anyone was to exaggerate the stories of themselves, it would be Lehman Russ. If anyone, w- so we read we read Lions of the Forest, and they have like Kai, one of the the risen dark angels. <laughs> And he always <laughs> talks about how he was like, well, I would have defeated them all with my superior bladesmanship. Kind of mm-hmm. like taking the piss out of himself. Yep, yep, yep. That was their dynamic. He was, uh, he he would exaggerate, and then his friend would bring him back down to Earth, and look at our little friend group. So yep. because of that, Lehman is kind of that way, where he'll he'll talk himself up in this really 
bo- boastful, bombastic way, kind of knowing full well he's full of shit. <laughs> but he just but really then likes if you, it. If you challenge him, he, he, he might have been exaggerating, but he can back it up. Well, yeah, because he's Lehman so it's not Russ. like you're gonna step to him and be like, "Oh, Lehman Rush, you're full of shit," and he's like, "Really? Try me." But basically, um, so for example, when the emperor arrived because he heard of these crazy deeds, and he's like, "That sounds like my son." <laughs> he arrived in his own little cloak and feel that made him look like just a regular old plain robed figure. Mm-hmm. Um, though everyone else who were sober in the hall as well as the wolves kind of shrunk away from its his presence because he's the emperor sure and lehman there of course never <laughs> to be one without a challenge just kind of laughed when he arrived and I, I thought you were gonna say and lehman never one to be sober well there's that too but <laughs> yeah. um basically they were to have a contest upon each other and if the stranger were to lose then uh, Lehman Russ would have the stranger serve at his side for a year. If the stranger was to win, then he would simply sit at the Wolf King's right hand during the feast and drink with him. Oh, wow. So ev- everything for Russ to win. Pretty much. Um, but the contest, of course, was uh, chosen by Lehman. He gets to pick. Mm-hmm. So the first one was an eating contest. <laughs> Of <laughs> naturally of course of course the wolf king wants an eating contest sure so uh the emperor ate more than any other person any other man anyone has ever seen <laughs> and and by the time the emperor finished his food he looked up and russ had consumed three times his food whoa so lehman point one Dang, Lehman's a hungry boy. The second contest was a drinking contest. (laughs) In which uh, after the emperor's sixth barrel of Fenrisian mead, there was no more uh, no more alcohol to drink because Russ had drank the rest of the feast dry already. Oh, wow. So point two after, to after Lehman. His, after his sixth barrel. Jeez. All right. So point two to Lehman. Okay. And then after this, the emperor got really pissed off. <laughs> and he was like, you are nothing more than a drunkard and a glutton. Just doing, <laughs> just stuffing your face. <laughs> so the final challenge was a trial by combat in which the emperor was like, Man, fuck this. And he took <laughs> off his entire disguise, showing himself, and punched Lehman so goddamn hard with his glove that it knocked him unconscious. <laughs> that is so... So technically, in two of the three... In a two out of three battle against the Emperor, Lehman Russ won. He won uh, two two points to one, right? Yeah, he did, but... He beat they, the Emperor! Then he got his ass kicked, and then yeah, for being a drunken glutton. <laughs> and so then that is he, great. Oh my god, it's it's very Lehman. <laughs> and so he woke up with blood in his mouth and a broken fang, and he was like, "All right." And then he swore fealty to the emperor with a with a smug grin on his face. You know, I gotta be honest. I've talked a lot of shit about Lehman Russ since I I initially was a big Thousand Suns fan, but the more I'm hearing, the more I'm really starting to warm up to Lehman Russ. He's kind of a shitter. (laughs) A little bit. Itty bitty bit, yeah. So, he swore fealty then to the Emperor, uh, because clearly it was his father and the usual kind of thing. yeah. Yeah. It, you can kind of assume that Lehman probably was just taking the piss anyway. Oh, because, sure. It, it, he'd probably do that to anybody that, like, challenged him, right? Like, oh, I bet I could beat you. And he's like, okay, sure. So I really like this excerpt here because this is when the emperor brought him on his flagship with Horus. Oh. Um, and so Horus kind of just looked at him. And stared at him and was like, there's no fraternal feeling at all. Like, <laughs> he just saw him and he's like, are those actual wolves? 
<laughs> the Empress said, after a fashion, they resemble the animals of old Earth, but uh, old Earth, but you would find them disappointingly small if you ever saw one. And wow. it was just the two wolves of uh, Lehman just sleeping on the uh, ground on the Emperor's uh, ship. Mm-hmm. And I mean, oh, if if I if I saw Lehman Russ and two wolves, I'd be like, "Yo, that's dope. That's, are those wolves? Let's go." Horus was very much like. I, it's, these guys are just like primitives. Like, yeah, they're just true. a bunch of... What? And the ending part of this is hilarious to me. It says... Because they, he beamed up a lot of not just um, Lehman, but also a lot of the, his, like, retinue. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it says, One of the warriors was tapping at a decanter with a dirty fingernail, puzzled by the glass. A roar <laughs> of laughter went up from his fellows as he accidentally pushed it off the table and shattered it on the marble floor. Glass <laughs> skitter... Across the hall, priceless purple amasex soaked into irreplaceable rugs. <laughs> He's a freaking cat. He is. He just like smacks it off cat. the table, and all the guys are like, "Whoa, <laughs> Whoa <laughs> let's go!" It's like you ruined the rug and the end, and wasted the amasex. It's just really funny to think <laughs> that about. Is that is great. <laughs> slaps it off. He's like, "Ha." <laughs> I, you know, I'm starting to warm up to Lehman and the Space Wolves, man. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, we're doing it. My, my we're job doing is it. getting we're easier. We're doing it. We're doing it. You're doing it, Peter. You're doing it. Peter, the wolf is here. That was a, that was a hook reference, actually, but that's okay. Oh, sorry. Don't worry. About um, it. I, I, it's fine. Um, <coughs> anyway, so naturally, Lehman Russ gets his legion, his legion Russ. <laughs> and goes along through the Great Crusade. Uh, he gets his fancy suit of power armor. He gets a fancy frost blade called Mjolnar. Uh, <laughs> On the nose a little bit again, but go ahead. A little ahead. bit. Uh, teeth taken from the maw of the Great Kraken Gormenjarl. Oh, okay. Which I'm assuming is their joke of Jormungandr, maybe? but uh, Probably, know. yeah. Oh, is that their armor? Do they have pelts on their armor? So... I would argue, I don't know if Shy would, would disagree with me, but I think the, the Space Wolves defect the most from the classic Space Marine look. Because they, oh. they are covered in talismans, pelts, uh, iconography. They got their giant beards and hair flowing in the wind. Oh, Dude. yeah, and their Horus Heresy look is dope. Oh, man, that's so much better than just like, because... The the post heresy is just kind of like it's like blue and what is it yellow, ish, but that's so cool. Oh, why would they change that? Why would you ever divert from that? I mean, they don't they didn't like divert that much. It's just like a like a little bit more of a blue color. Oh, well, okay, sh- I I could have sworn that their regular like because the, the one I always remember seeing was kind of just like blue and i was i remember being very unimpressed with like all the space wolves minis i saw but like the like like you said that horus heresy one is so cool i i think it's also because the horus heresy i think it's a character i think it's like one of the uh, fancy boys okay um but like I, yeah for the for the most part i don't know where's they, they did it they did a joy toy launch for ragnar Maybe I'm just, maybe I just saw, like, maybe I'm just mistaking what mini I saw. Oh, that's, okay, that's really cool, too, actually. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm back. I'm back on board. Never mind, I'm back. I'm back. That's a Joy Toy one, so it's, like, the bigger one, obviously, but. Yeah, and a little more detailed, and probably, you know, your standard mini doesn't have as much, but that is, that is pretty cool. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I I think the issue is that, um, because they're Space Marines, you have to make space wolves just a different color space marines you paint them right. as space wolves and if you want to make them look like lore accurate you need to add all the little bits and baubles yourself oh sure sure so like all of their named characters probably look really really sick but it's like oh yeah just your regular space marine infantry is like yeah it's blue yeah you mistake like, it for an ultramarine except for a little color variation here and there gotcha yeah, so like Ragnar Blackmang, for example, has a mini that was recently done. He cut off uh, Gaskell's head, if you remember that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He has a mini, and it, it looks a bit more correct. Um, okay. 
But anyway, we're getting off topic. Yeah, we're uh, getting way off topic. This is for the uh, Space Wolves episode. Right. So Lehman has all of his boys and he has his legion. He does <clears throat> the usual Great Crusade thing, going out, bringing plants into compliance, the huge. Um, mm-hmm. But it's important to note how the emperor and, and brothers saw Lehman. So <laughs> there's an interesting like dichotomy and, and dynamic between a few of his brothers. Um, mm-hmm. Lehman and the lion didn't much like each other a whole lot. Yeah, I got that. Um, in a weird way, they actually, I think, started to grow on each other near the end. Um, okay. But they often butt heads pretty consistently. And there's a neat way to look at them is that they're kind of two sides of, of a the coin, same coin, but they're they're opposites in how they run it. Right. So they want the same things, but they just go about getting it very differently. Uh, not quite. Um, oh. like, like, for example, when we talked <laughs> about the lion, he was uh, a like the noble knight of Caliban. But in reality, deep down, he is like a monster. Oh, yeah, for sure. Some of the things he does. Yeah, he is. Whew. Yeah, he was he was truly like a, a wild animal internally. Russ oh. was actually a pretty decent dude and, and was actually quite noble, but he wore the, the persona of the wild animal outwardly. Oh, that that is a great way to put it. Lion was a noble knight who was a wild animal on the inside, and Russ is a wild animal on the outside, but inside is a is a noble, decent guy. Okay, okay, okay. That's hey, that's fitting. Yeah, like the lion is a savage playing knight, and the Lehman Lehman is a knight playing the savage. Gotcha. So it, cool. it's a it's a neat little dynamic between the two of them, and I think it's one of the reasons they butt heads a lot. Oh, um, absolutely, sure. Because there, there's actually a part in which uh, the two of them kind of get pissed off at each other, and <laughs> they they duel for a while, is just out of anger and stuff. But eventually, like randomly during it, Lehman and Russ is like. Wait a minute. This is stupid. And he just kind of <laughs>, laughs his ass off and walks away. Wow, really? He just Okay. Yeah. He's okay, just like, hey. wait a minute. This is dumb. Why are we this is stupid? I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> wait, no. And he just kind of leaves. Okay. Okay. Chad move. Chad and, move. and the lion sure. mauls really hard about this. Oh, I'm sure he does. He probably copes, seethes, mauls, and just starts screaming and rolling on the floor like a little child. Well, okay, he probably doesn't do that, but yeah, he's probably not happy. No, so later on, at, like he comes back afterwards, I believe, um, I believe, and is like eventually just says, "We never finished what we started." And <laughs> Lehman's like, "I don't care." And then the and then the lion just stabs him in the chest. Oh, <laughs> just like shoves his sword all the way to the hilt in his chest, and then wow. the lion goes blacks out, or um, Lehman blacks out, and then and then the lion just kind of leaves. He's like, "Fuck you." Damn, what a what a man child. He, his, what a his personal like you know, like honor or whatever was was very hurt by the fact yeah. that Levin was just like, wait a minute, this is stupid. <laughs> Lion leaves like, ha, I won. <laughs> but it's not as back. if uh it's <clears throat> not as if this is like the only time they butt heads. There was a situation in which the lion fired upon Lehman's vessel for a second. Because oh, really? Because uh, Lehman Russ, in his love for just going forward really quickly and murdering people. Uh, oh, I, blew- I thought you were going to say because Gilliman's mother was on the ship, but. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, because uh, he blew up a ship that the lion had already boarded and without realizing it. Uh, okay. Um, and killed a shitload of the lion's top people. Uh, and yeah, this is one uh... of those moments where the lion is like. Or not the line. Lehman is like feels terrible about it and like tries to atone in that battle. Yeah. And apologizes uh, and stuff. That's a bit of an oofy. Bit of an oofy. Yeah. Yikes. So Lion, not the one you want to accidentally kill a bunch of his people. No. If I'm not mistaken, there's also that interesting um uh interesting little part in the first heretic book. Where they're all at like a, a boisterous party or something, and the Lehman is really drunk or at least pretending to be drunk, mm-hmm. and he chats with Lorgar for a bit. 
Yeah. And they kind of they kind of like seemed kind of okay with each other, despite them being so horrendously different. Oh yeah, totally opposites. Um, but for the most part, you know, to to really describe Le- uh, Lehman Russ well, he was a boisterous, loud. You know, I am going to go do whatever my dad says, and I'm going to do it perfectly fine because I am the the emperor's executioner. I will loudly sing my praises to the stars and murder anyone he tells me to because I am daddy's best boy. <laughs> Seems like the leader of a frat house. Well, I mean, with like a, a rich dad, you know. Oh, he is a king of the like yep. bunch of bunch of Norse dudes. Yep, 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 yep. He's he he's he's dope though. So far, so good. I mean, I I know what he does later, but still, you know, he's, I am I am warming up to the Space Wolves and to uh, Lehman Russ significantly more than I thought I would. Ironic. I'd assume you'd be a little more cooling down. <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway, um, yeah, Gilliman would uh, mention that there was a few he referred to as the Dauntless Few, which were four people, himself, Dorn, I think Sanguinius, I think Ferris, maybe, and also Lehman. And they were the ones that would never, ever betray the Imperium. Like, he fully trusted them as not having to worry about uh, Chaos Influence and, and Horus. Yeah, that's fair. Though uh, Of those names, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, you know, fair. like, obviously Dorn, too, but... Yeah, and obviously Sanguinius, and yeah. But it also kind of goes to st- uh, show the difference between the two of them, uh, Lion and... We learn a lot from Lehman by looking at the Lion, because where the Lion, or where Lehman is sent off to go, like, all right, comply this world, and then a whole bunch of loud, loud space wolves drink their asses off and run down and have a great <laughs> time killing people and, and yeah. battling. Um, and and it, they yell it to everybody. Everyone's very clear what the uh, Lehman mm-hmm. Russ is all about. He shouts his loyalty to the sky where the lion is like the, not the emperor's executioner. He's the emperor's exterminator. Yeah. Like Has, go deal oh. with that planet and don't let anyone know. I was very stupidly about to ask if Lehman Russ had interacted with the lion since he woke up. And then I was like, oh, how could he? Because he's, you know, he's not around anymore, right? He's not around currently. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, I guess he probably wouldn't have any interaction with woke up lion, Woody. Yikes. No. Sorry. Uh, a good example of this emperor's executioner stuff is actually the Knight of the Wolf which uh, you should actually remember quite well. It was when uh, he went to go confront Angron to tell him to stop putting the butcher's nails in his sons. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was in Betrayer. Right. Didn't work out so well. No, the two of them eventually came to blows and fought each other, uh, but both of them kind of... Like, Lehman held... Uh, it said that Lehman held back because the Emperor told him, don't kill the damn guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, both people say they won the battle, but both kind of think they lost the battle. Yeah. Oh, right. That's the one where like Angron, uh, what, what is it? Is it one of his, one of his guys is like, bro, you didn't win at all. They had you surrounded and they could have killed you at any moment, but they chose to retreat. Like, how could you possibly think you won that? I think Lorgar was the one who told him that. Yeah, you're right. It was Lorgar that told him that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so, Man, it's you know. it's been a while since we read that, actually. Oh, yeah, Betrayer was a bit ago. Yeah. But Night of the Wolf was one of those situations in which it specifically was an entire, uh, an entire statement where, hey, the Emperor's Executioner, Lehman Russ, the, like, the, the guard dog of the Emperor, the loyal hound. Yeah, would go out to do this thing, and you know, Angron is is Angron. <laughs> Angron is indeed Angron. Yes. So now that so it, it was it was a small part Night of the Wolf, but now I can play post this meme, which is unironically one of my favorite memes I have seen in in 40k in the last like two years. Okay, okay, lay it on me. There you go. 
some wishy back and forth banter. You go back. <laughs> Look, I'm not sure. Chewing- <laughs> <laughs> that is that is so accurate, and that is indeed going to be one of my favorite <laughs> memes going forward. It's very, it's very, very funny. <laughs> And so accurate. <laughs> um. Any, anyway, uh, the Horus Heresy actions of Angron are not Angron. Sorry, of Lehman are not particularly super. They're important, but they're they're small. His his overall of uh, uh, actions in the Horus Heresy are small. The main big one that we've talked about a couple times already is, of course, the burning of Prospero. Yeah, where he yeah. Uh, where he uh, banes uh, Magnus. He uh, he basically, eventually, Magnus blows through the webway for the Big E. Big E is furious and says that Magnus is a traitor. Lehman, go bring him back! God damn it! Sent bring him back to Terra. And then yep. um, Horus intercepts them and says, hey, uh, times have changed. He is like the biggest traitor ever. Dad wants you to kill him. Yeah, and just burn Prospero to the ground. And, and of course, it, Lehman Russ is like, oh, it's Horus saying it. Well, that must that is that's basically the word of the emperor. A uh, Horus was war master at this time. Uh, and also, you know, Lehman of all people would not would not fail in his duty to do what dad wants him to do yeah yep Oof. so um though yeah Ru- russ still that being said russ still did try to talk magnus down first yeah well wasn't it something like uh magnus cut communication from prospero because he felt so bad about breaking the webway that he was like you know what i deserve whatever's coming like if they burn prospero i kind of deserve it it, that was there was a little bit of like a a fealty kind of fatalism of that he had there where he he really he kind of yeah he did want the space wolves to kill uh, quite a lot of them for his mistakes but he was kind of yeah. being a little whiny um, yeah I mean we still have a thousand suns episode to do we can get that's more true into that that's then. true we can we can get more into that when the when that rolls around sure sure but uh, with this and the sorcery of Magnus and his folks. They brought a whole bunch of Sisters of Silence to the burning of Prospero, and as we know, absolutely raised this place to the ground. <laughs> it's called the burning of Prospero. You're telling me they actually burned it to the ground? <laughs> like it's <laughs> just—it's crazy to truly like state how much they absolutely obliterated Prospero, um, yeah. which is why after getting his back broken, uh, Magnus needed to escape using the power like asking for help with the power of zinch and that's kind of what damned magnus and thousand sons was yep lehman's zinch and and lehman's well horus is in our interaction but also lehman's kind of maybe a little too headstrung yeah maybe went a little too hard on prosper (laughs) maybe maybe took a little too much fire and brimstone with him it's a little it's a little I'm not. I'm not huge on this part. I feel like it's a little shaky writing that Lehman would just be like, "Oh, okay, Horace, I'll kill him." And yeah. it feels a little too easy. Maybe, um, yeah. But, but but again, it's like if if that's what he thinks the emperor wants, like he is going to do it to the best of his ability and to the most complete he can. Yeah, well, absolutely, because he is Lehman Russ, and he is yeah, the most yep. one of the most loyal. Hmm. Um, why would he even, question Horus? You know, why would he think to you know? Yeah, but there, like, the issue I think is that is that Lehman Russ is not because he's not stupid, and yeah, despite, that's true, he's not. Despite his looks, I feel like there should have been a little bit more of a questioning hmm. himself deal. Like, is this really what Father would want? Like, or I don't least, have to completely burn Prospero. Like, I can, I can, like take it over and conquer it but maybe i don't have to like literally kill everybody and just leave it ash right and maybe he could have just asked dad just like hey we sure about confirmation please yeah 
But like that's going above and and Horus is the war master. So like I get it, but it does feel yeah. like a little shaky. Yeah. Um regardless. Yes, yeah, so Magnus gets uh thrown into the warp portal and all that stuff mm. and after leaving this Lehman has a bit of a run in with the Alpha Legion. Uh I you may remember the Alpha Legion specifically uh with they talked with Jagatai Com when we talked about the Com and the Com mm-hmm. and Jagatai was like I don't know which one of you is loyal so I'm just going to stay out of this bye. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And so there was a big fight with uh with the Alpha Legion. There's Lehman going to town on one of the Terminators. Yeah, I imagine Lehman Russ would kind of dunk on the Alpha Legion, like just in a. I mean, I guess they'd probably use a lot of trickery and stuff, but I, for some reason in my head, if there was like, oh yeah, there's a fight between Alpharius, uh, the the and and the Space Wolves and Lehman Russ, it's like, man, Lehman Russ is gonna like walk all over him, right? Well, it, it may be like a one-on-one revolutionary war formation fight, sure, but at this point, the Alpha Legion kind of. Kind of beat the Space Wolves here. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Well, they were already damaged from after the burning of Prospero. Oh, that's that. Okay, true. And true. For some reason, I was thinking they were all 100% versus 100%. That's that's fair. Uh, what's what is more? Uh, yeah, that's right. Alpharius was also there fighting disguise as a regular Terminator. Ah, um, which okay. also makes things pretty tough. That's that's true. You think you're fighting a Terminator and it's like, oh, by the way, that's a Primark. And eventually they actually had to be bailed out by the Dark Angels themselves. Oh, wow. So okay. the Dark Angels arrive saved because, you know, every battle in the Horus Heresy is almost the Primark almost dies. But then he's saved by X. Sure, because they're too important to just kind of throw away. Yeah, Right. Wow. So, so the Alpha Legion kind of dunked on a weakened... Um, Space Wolves. Oh, yeah. I mean, besides the the Night Lords, what other faction would dunk on a weakened person? Well, that's fair, actually. They only get into a fight you know you can win, right? Yep. And this is also one of the big turning points for uh, Lehman Russ from a character point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, as Shai says here, surrounded on all sides and a band by the White Scars, Russ consigned himself to defeat and admitted to Bjorn. Uh, Bjorn's one of his closest advisors. That blindly serving as the Emperor's executioner had been a mistake. Russ pledged to take his own path from now on. Oh. So this was like the big moment where he was like, whoa, I really should maybe like, yeah, I'm I'm going to follow the emperor, but like I should maybe think for myself a little bit and like assess situations better instead of just like, oh, emperor told me to go in and do it, so I'm going to do it. Basically. Because uh, it, 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 it backfired on him here and almost, you know, killed him. The the entirety of the of Lehman Russ's kind of slight character development here is him realizing that maybe doing everything just being sent out as a tool isn't really always the best and mm. making his own decisions would be pretty darn helpful. Yeah. Um, wow. So at that point, though, after the entire Alpha Legion section, all of that jazz, the Night of the Wolf, most of the Horus Heresy stuff. Mm-hmm. The main, well, let's, let's say I, I'm, I'm kind of underselling how much the Alpha Legion kind of kind of hurt him right there. It was, it was a pretty rough one. Okay. Um. So by figuring out what to do for himself, he decided to go down a spiritual journey back on Fenris. Um. This is one of the most on the nose parts of the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he, he, there was a ritual uh, involving himself, uh, seven rune priests, which are basically just psychers. Uh-huh, um, sure. But they think psychers are stupid, but they're psychers. But rune um, priests, these aren't psychers, they're rune priests. They're, yeah, this is, this is the spirit different. of Valhalla. It's different. It's different. Oh, I totally forgot. Uh, you know, they call, the, they call the emperor the Allfather. No way. Do they really? They actually do, yeah. It's, it's for Russ <sighs> and the Allfather. Okay. All right. Hey, so far everything's been really cool. So I'll I'll take the on the nose uh Norse mythology stuff because I I have been enjoying uh Lehman Russ's stuff so far. So I'll I'll give him a pass. I'll give him a pass. All right. All right. But but yeah, it was kind of silly. Yeah, very on the nose. Um so 
they decide to enter this place called the Underverse, which is basically just Helheim, yeah, if I'm being honest, yeah, through yeah. a volcanic cavern known as Surter's Door. <laughs> oh, we're doing it. Oh, we're doing it. Um, so they entered the hall of uh, Russ entered the hall of the Earl King, a warp entity that collects Fenrisian souls, which die outside of battle. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> um, it didn't particularly go well to start with as the Earl King had hordes of Wolfim, the half, uh, half wolf people. Okay. Um, and we're about to be murdered by him where he decided to try to get his soul back in exchange for four challenges. These four challenges are absolutely also part of Norse mythology. And I think Thor did these. Oh, I was hoping you were going to say first he ate a lot, then he drank a lot. <laughs> so the first <laughs> the first uh, challenge was that he needed to drink the damned souls Amarok's bowl dry which he could Oof. not. He yeah, then needed tough. to wrestle down an old crone, which he could not. What's an old crone? He's an old lady. Oh, okay. Uh, and then he finally was to move the king's great sleeping wolf, which he also could not. Oh, that's, so this is a very humbling experience for uh, Lehman. The fourth option, or the fourth challenge was to explain what these challenges meant. And what this was, was that the first challenge was the changing of the seasons of Fenris, Mm -hmm. the drinking of the bull. The second, the old woman, was the inevitability of age. You can't wrestle down the old crone. Sure, sure. Father time always wins. And the unmovable wolf is the inescapable of of death, the, the inability to escape death. Okay. Um, so... After realizing all these things, the hall crumbled and a version of Russ that never landed on Fenris appeared like a vision. Oh, and at this time, Russ actually had a gift from the emperor. It was called the emperor's spear, which if I am ever expecting Lehman Russ to come back, he would most definitely be armed with the emperor's spear. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it seems pretty, pretty clear that that's going to be his weapon moving forward when he returns. This spear has the actual ability to reveal the truth of whoever is stabbed with it. And oh, that's a big deal. Immediately after realizing this, the fake Russ shanked Lehman in the chest with the spear, which, uh-huh. quote, revealed to him the truth regarding the nature of the Primarchs. Oh... Which we don't get to know. Sorry. Well, uh, well, we, we can't. Well, no, I guess. Yeah, no, we, we don't. We don't know. It we don't sa- know. It says that Russ despaired and the knowledge would one day see him leave Fenris. Uh, but after that, the whole final point of this was the idea that if you're going to stop Horus, shaking him with the spear will bring out the true Horus. Uh, and therefore, you know, yeah. now it, it's assumed that uh, the knowledge that he got was the fact that the Primarchs were made with a bunch of warp shenanigans and deals with the gods. Yeah, because uh, that's what happens in the uh, which heretic. book was it? First heretic. Yeah, yeah. Is is they suggest that the emperor made a deal with the chaos gods that they would teach him how to make Primarchs, and then he was like, oh, hey, our deal's off. Ha ha ha, losers. And that's why they scattered the Primarchs uh, across the, the galaxy, right? That is part of what we learned in that one. Uh, yeah. But simultaneously, it's also, we don't actually know specifically. Yeah, that's true. You could say that their nature could also have been a kind of like what the emperor had made them for, for like the truth. And that truth is why he despaired. It's kind of hard yeah. to tell. Yeah, yeah. Um, so where, where is Russ now? Oh, he's on Fenris when he did all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Does he, does he, he doesn't die from that. Is he just like no, wallowing in despair somewhere now or? No, no, no. He He wakes up from this and then decides to the best course of action for him right now is to go ambush Horus and shank him with the spear. Okay. Okay, cool. Which 
naturally, is a pretty good idea. Oh, it's a great idea. Uh, unfortunately, he does, or fortunately, he does go ambush the vengeful spirit and immediately fight Horus. Doesn't oh. quite get him with the spear, hits him with a glancing blow. They duel in a crazy fight, usual Primark duels. Uh huh. Russ almost dies in the fights. All of his guys arrive to save him. He's dragged away to safety. Sure. Every single Primark duel in the Horus Heresy ends this way. Sure. I, I was going to say, between Le- as cool as we have portrayed Lehman Russ so far at the time, there's no way you're winning a duel with Horus. Horus currently is pretty is pretty juiced. Yeah, I mean, even before Chaos, he was like the favored son and everything. And then you juice his ass up with Chaos, and it's like, good luck. I'm surprised you got a glancing blow. I mean, Chaya's good make a good point. Fulgrim did kill Ferris Manus and fatally stabbed Bobby G. That's true. That is, that is you know, he was but, head and shoulders better than Ferris Manus. Oh, here we go again. Sorry, I couldn't help it. We're sorry, gonna get banned sorry. from the Discord for the fifth time. Oh man! Um, but every Primarch duel goes this way. He tried to do it, didn't quite do it. Got so badly wounded, he went into a comatose state. Ooh! Was only uh, reawakened when Korax arrived with the Raven Guard, as well as meeting up with Lionel Johnson, Ouch. and you know, trying to get them all prepped. Yeah. And- ready for the craziness of the final fight of the war. So Horus beat him into a coma, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, Horus was pretty juiced at this point. He also yeah. he also put the emperor on the throne when you think about it. That, that is true. He, well, the emperor wasn't like, he wasn't going full force, right? Because he still was like, oh, yeah, it's still Horus. It's, it's still, still my boy. And it wasn't until he killed that guard that he was like, not my son. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's, that's true. The, that's according to the emperor. That's yeah, true. The, the emperor says that, but like, that's a true. Prior, unreliable narrator, potentially. Fair enough. It's the the power level of the emperor is so fluctuating depending on the book and the writer. It's it, like mm-hmm. there's no good explanation. True. Um, true. But uh, this is kind of why Lehman Russ was not present in the siege of Terra. Was all of these issues with him being in a comatose state and. Right, These all right. difficulties, especially because Dorn and the like were said to Lehman, hey, don't go kill Horus right now. We need you for the Siege of Terra. And so oh. when Horus made his gamble to teleport the Emperor onto his flagship, it was with the express knowledge and fear that the Space Wolves and I think the Dark Angels and the rest were on their way. Right. He had, a, he had a time frame issue. Mm hmm. Uh, and so Lehman Russ arriving late to the Siege of Terra is really damn rough because he was told by Dorn, don't leave. Oh, so if he had actually listened to Dorn and had actually like not gone after Horus, not gone comatose and defended Terra, things would have turned out a lot differently. Shy says it reminds her of the Empire Strikes Back. No, don't go fight the asshole, Luke. And then he does. And then he gets his ass kicked and he loses an arm. <laughs> he does. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But he gets the important knowledge that Vader is his father. Yeah, I, I guess. He needs that information in Return of the Jedi, I guess. I guess. Anyway. Uh, so, obviously, Lehman is not there for this final Siege of Terra. He arrives late. Mm-hmm. which is very unfortunate, and he is yeah. clearly distraught by this. Oh, yeah. It, he's got to be... Like, I'm sure all of the Primarchs are just devastated, but if anybody, like, of the survivors would be most devastated, it would be, you know, people like Dorn, people like Lehman Russ, because they were, like, the most loyal, right? Dorn, I think I think Dorn and Jagatai put him on the throne itself so yeah. yeah oh that's right that's true yeah yeah, yeah. it is it is not it is not great yeah that um, sucks but you know Lehman after this point it's kind of funny uh, Gilliman became the Lord Commander of the Imperium and made the Codex of Stardes and Lehman basically was just like yeah whatever dude <laughs> I, like he, he just kind of didn't even really listen to it much 
<laughs> Fair. That 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 sounds like a very Lehman Russ thing to do. Um, I was gonna say Lehman. A part of me was like, he's he must feel like he has almost like lost his purpose because his whole thing was just like, oh, I'm loyal to the emperor. I do as the emperor commands, and I always do it. Pri-. He's got to feel a little empty. He he got really depresso. Oh and sure, yeah, yeah. That is kind of the interesting final bit. Uh, it's it's act it's quite interesting. Um, eventually, some time after. Lehman Russ's uh, or the Emperor's interment, they have this large feast. Oh, I, I have his final words. Don't worry, Shy. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, they have this this final feast, and during this big feast that they normally have, Russ kind of stands up and just stares out into the into the nothingness across the hall, Ooh. and falls directly onto his knees in in his in like despairment, Yeesh. and he says this. Listen but closely, brothers, for my life's breath is all but spent. There shall come a time far from now when our chapter itself is dying, even as I am now dying, and our foes shall gather to destroy us. Then, my children, I shall listen for your call in whatever realm of death holds me, and come I shall, no matter what the laws of life and death forbid. At the end, I will be there for the final battle. For the wolf time, which I'm pretty sure is just Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. At that point, he took a contingent of his of his um, space wolves and left. And Uh, assumingly went to the warp or something. We have no idea. And he has never been seen again. Oh, wow. So after that, he just. He just puts himself into like, uh, Self exile. It's assumed that he went to the Eye of Terror to find the Tree of Life. Um. Oh. In uh, to that will bear fruits to heal and restore the Emperor to life again. Hmm. But we we don't know. It's assumed. It's believed. Wow. That's 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 heavy. Yeah. And that's heavy. That's a heavy way to go. That's a heavy final uh, final words. Uh, every standard year after his disappearance, he had the same feast. Uh, every year, his drinking horn was filled if he ever came back. And eventually, after seven years, he never did. So Bjorn, his successor, was elected as the new great wolf and began the hunt f- to search for Russ again. Um, Damn. Bjorn the Fell Handed is a character you can use in the game. Uh, he's a dreadnought. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's he's kind of got this like old man shtick to him where you you kind of <laughs> you like dr- you drink a bunch of mead you all shit and piss everywhere you wake up Bjorn like <laughs> hey Bjorn yeah. <laughs> wow well, yeah, that's a dreadnought all right yep yeah, that he, is a dreadnought he's pretty cool um but now so now he helps run these great hunts in an attempt to find Russ again okay um, they were uh, the first hunt found nothing the second hunt uh was the great hunt and they found russ's armor oh where'd they find it from the temple of horus on the world of rudra by the edge of the eye of terror oh okay the fourth hunt uncovered a conspiracy to un- to overthrow the administratum in a coup Uh, The ninth great hunt led to the gene stealer destruction, uh, gene stealer world destruction in a system and so on and so forth. The great hunts have gained many victories, but very few actual signs of Lehman himself. Just the armor, huh? Just the armor. Uh, It is said Mm. that each hunt begins when Russ speaks through visions in the minds of his rune priests, giving them wisdom and sending them on new quests. Mm-hmm. But how much of that is psycho shenanigans? It's hard to tell. It seems like a lot of it's psycho shenanigans because if Russ was speaking to them, then wouldn't they have found more Russ stuff? Well, it's, it's cryptic. It's crypt. It's like cryptic vision. It's true. You know? Which was also a very big Norse thing, right? Was the uh, these cryptic visions and right and the the threads of fate and the what is it the the 
three witches that share the eye of fate or something. Oh, the um, the what the the three uh, people that like write write fate. Yeah, 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 and they can cut the strings and such. Yeah, I remember I remember them very vividly in in God of War Ragnarok. I thought it was a really good scene. Yeah, I. <laughs> it's gonna sound. St- I remember them from the <clears throat> the Hercules. <clears throat> The, oh yeah, they are. Movie. They are literally called the Fates. I, the Fates, I'm, right? There are a lot of like, like there are a lot of super big Norse mythology fans in Warhammer. Like there are World War Two, uh, like nuts. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's cool mythology, though. To be fair, like I, uh, when oh, I was it, in, it is like my first year of college. I dabbled a little bit into that stuff, but yeah. I, I could see how anyone like that would absolutely just gravitate to the Space Wolves and Lehman Russ, for sure. I, I only say this because I I clearly don't know a whole lot about it. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I, I apologize to any of our fans who are gigantic into Norse mythology and aren't hearing me speci- <laughs> specifically be like, hey, this is a lot like this part in Norse mythology. Like, I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I hey, I I don't really know either. So, but so far it all sounds dope. I mean, you know. Yeah, so so that's that's where Lehman's at right now. He, it's assumed he went in the Eye of Terror. He'll come back during Ragnarok basically, and all of the Space Wolves are out hunting. Uh for the time being, Lehman, the greatest sin of Lehman Russ is the fact that he doesn't have a beard. What? Really? Yeah. He doesn't have a beard. Oh, that's true. He doesn't. Yeah, that's what, right. He doesn't. What the hell's up with that? Yeah, that's that's kind of messed up. So if he's in the Eye of Terror, could he possibly be uh, warp tainted then or no? That's kind uh, of. I, what I only were, ask because I I, I kind of want him to have like wolf features when he comes back out and be like a uh, you know. That is one of the things that a lot of people like to uh, to hope for is that he'll be this like giant half wolf half viking like kind of like korax is the bird yeah exactly i i would like i want korax to show up and just be like have actual like raven wings and like you know and stuff like that uh yeah right so so he could be like that though at the same time i i think that it might be less less that vibe and more just a a spear wielding yeah uh, norse you know soldier kind of vibe yeah and it's like oh well he's a primark of course he didn't get mutated by chaos he's a primark he's a primark he's a primark he's a primark he's a primark, he's a primark. just a so, little primark so for the for the most part when it comes to to lehman as a character and the like um what i said earlier he he really is kind of what he is on the tin but <laughs> yeah. at the same time he's still got some honest to god complexity yeah, he's, he's sure. interesting. Interesting in a lot of ways. Uh, he's he's got like I I don't know. Shy, do you think he's the the product that's having the most fun? Actually, Fulgrim is having a lot of fun. Yeah, I was gonna say Fulgrim probably. I don't because like maybe pre heresy, I would say that like Lehman Russ was having a good time, having a good time. But like post heresy, he is like probably the oh, worst sorry. off of like all of them right sorry i i maybe i misspoke during like during horus heresy 30k time great crusade era i oh. think he was probably having the best time right yeah. now he is definitely not having a good time yeah right now he is ex- he is in the express lane of agony like when well, i mean not agony but he is <laughs> i am straight up not having a good time bro so yeah Oh, well, Sanguinius was having a lot of art and fun. That's true. Yeah, the con, the con did have a good time too. I feel like Lehman had more fun than the con, but maybe not as fun as. Well, Sanguinius was also hit with death visions all the time, and that wasn't very fun. Yeah, that probably wasn't fun. But at least he knew that he was going to like you know, his death had a purpose, right? He saw the best future, and he was like, "Oh yeah, it's it's going to lead to like the emperor surviving," right? I don't think anyone had as much outward and showed the fun they had maybe fulgrim i think i think maybe yeah. just fulgrim I, I i still i still love that little bit where liam and russ and the emperor <laughs> the shrinking and eating <laughs> it's so good 
he out ate and out drank the emperor and the emperor was just like bro and just pow. i love that so i that i think that was the moment where i was like yep okay lehman russ you've won me over i don't care about the prospero thing you've won me over it's pretty peak and I, th- I think that's one of the fun things about Lehman. And I think one of the reasons why Space Wolves fans like Lehman is because, yeah, he actually has some genuine character. He has some character uh, arcs and some interesting traits. But at the end of the day, he is an extraordinarily loyal son, not because of like any heady ideals of honor or anything, but because just he's a loyal son. Yeah, you know, and and he's got some pretty complex character development too. Like he goes through it. He like he you can see him develop from like just you know this kid that's raised by wolves on a death world to like realizing the tragedy of just blindly and loyally following the emperor. Like it's 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 quite the character arc. So I'm I am I am happy about. Uh, Turning into, I, I mean, I might not be now a Space Wolves fan or whatever, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed learning about Lehman Russ today. I'm, I am glad. I'm glad that you can get him. Yeah. More than anything, uh, Shy does make a great point. Next episode, I, next episode, I think will actually be a little bit more fun because we'll be talking about the months of shame, which is awesome, and the we'll talk a lot about the. Months of shame, and we'll also get a chance to talk about the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven named characters what? that they have that have minis <laughs> on they the have tabletop. Eleven named char- Is that the most named characters out of any chapter? Uh, I I think yes. I think it beats everything extremely. Wow. It's it's a lot. We um, yeah, it, we might split it up because months of shame might involve its own episode. Um, but Dang. yeah, they they have because that's the whole point of of you know oh of that's space true wolves like are all the yeah, sagas yeah. the saga and earning your name and 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 oh, okay oh that's I'm 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 looking forward to next week then yeah so we'll we'll go ahead and do that next week will be the legion and its named characters and then we'll Hell do the yeah. months of shame a different time. Nice. I'm looking. So we're off to a great start with the Space Wolves. I, I've already completely 180'd. I am really liking Lima. Oh, I'm looking. Oh, I'm looking forward to the next couple weeks. This is going to be good. This is going to so, be real good. So to end the episode, we have to bring back an old favorite. We do? Yes. Okay. What What's the old favorite? Or Magnus, the, Magnus the, uh, the Red is like, oh, no, me, me. Like nerd emoji, my psyker ability, and Lima Russ comes up, back break, and goes woo 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 woo. I forgot all of that. Hell yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah.